My first impression of Princess Cassidy's private quarters is that they resemble a rose under glass. Here she sleeps in her curtained bed upon a pedestal, wrapped in comforting waves of pink. At least until she suffocates beneath them. <laughs> Still, tastes differ. Simply because I would not like to live in such a room does not necessarily mean that Cassidy feels trapped here. Very true. Hello again, Madeline. I'm glad everything is going so well. What do you mean? Oh, never mind. What is Cal Callum telling you? Has Callum been talking to her about me? Again? Come and see the others. There's something I want to show you. She guides me along. Callum nods at my entrance. Dolores deliberately ignores me. <sighs> Look! Oscar sent me a poem! Oh, very nice. She holds up a sheet of parchment, decorated with lines of elegant script. Oscar's handwriting is an accomplished skill. The problem is the words that he writes. <laughs> she dances on a dewdrop smile with crystal clear delicacy and sings a song of our erstwhile forgotten dreams beyond the sea. Oh, Oscar. What does that even mean? <laughs> Isn't it sweet? Yes, it is. It seems you've made quite an impression on him. Did he bring this to you? No, the guards delivered it. That's something else you have in common at the moment. You're both held under lock and key. Oh, I'm used to that. With all of you here, I'm getting to talk to a lot more people than I ever did before. I can't blame my parents for being careful. Not when it seems there really are enemies. Yes, about that. What have you found so far? The guardsman who attacked us, one Devant, was a relatively recent recruit, hailing from lands under the control of the Grandessa. No surprise there. Grandessa Marie, the Wisdom Sister and your aunt, correct? Yes, although I don't know her well. She almost never visits the palace. She and Mother don't get along. This Devant was not well liked among the guards or other soldiers, at least not that anyone will admit. His closest companions were a pair of servants who came from the territory of Duke Farad, a sullen stable boy named Vito, and a maid, Raquel, who fancied Devant and is now too distraught to make much sense. That may be an act, but I do not currently have permission to question her more sternly. Raquel is a ninny. She believes every romantic nonsense she hears. She couldn't drown a mouse. Never knew Vito to notice something with less than four legs, but nobody'd cry if you whipped him. <laughs> Neither is suspected of being another assassin at this point. I don't know any of these people. What about the guards? Rotations have been drawn up based on previous access and opportunity to minimize the risk to Cassidy. No obvious threats have been uncovered. So that just leaves all the subtle ones. That's good. Narrows it a bit. <laughs> and the most subtle and suspicious of all is Duke Farad. Duke Farad married Sophia, the Grandessa's daughter. Now that they have a child, she, Riel, is my heir until I have a daughter of my own. Which gives Farad the strongest possible motive. Through Riel, he could become regent. Also, he hates everyone. Conversation is disrupted as eyes turn to Dolores. What? It's no secret. Even their people don't make any friends here. Hard folk, all of them. I remember seeing some of his entourage at dinner my first night. They stood out like flies in a milk glass. <laughs> their clothing, their manners, everything was too rough. He harbors thugs under our very roof. You should get along fine, then. What else do you know about Farad? Does he have support? Other noble relatives? I just love that we ignored Loras' uh, jabs, by the way. <laughs> just gotta say. No, I believe he was a clerk before his marriage. Mother said that Sophia had many suitors, but Aunt Marie drove them all away. She wanted her daughter to remain unmarried to stay in the line of inheritance. Because of Caspian, she thought there was a chance that I might not survive. 
That's an awful way to think about her own family. They're nobles, isn't that how it works? Hmm. All of you so stuck on whose blood and whose land you're born to like a mean something. You are no better than the rest of us. Insult me as you like. These two deserve better. I can't help smiling when he says that. Aww. But we are being diverted from the root of the matter. Yes, Dolores, keep on topic. Farad may have the most to gain, but is there any evidence? The connection with the servants is very thin. Nothing as yet. I wasn't making it up earlier, what I said. Him and his folk have been keeping the maids out of their rooms. That's suspicious. You also said you knew what Farad and Sophia were plotting. I did? At the river. Oh, well, that part I made up. Thought you'd be interested, that's all. <laughs> of course, nothing that you say can be trusted. Too late to shut me out now. There's no need. We can help each other. Neither Callum nor Dolores is likely to offer the other a hand of friendship. Mm -hmm. As I look away from the confronta confrontation, my eye falls upon an oddly shabby inhabitant of the room. Well, this took a random turn. A creature of faded blue cloth sprawled atop a dusty shelf. Is that a goblin? What? Oh no, that's my bear! It doesn't look much like a bear to me. <laughs> Aww! Sure it does! That's so cute. Princess Cassidy scoops up the patch fabric toy and cuddles it. Aww. I've had him since I was a little girl. He was my very favorite toy. You'll always protect me, won't you, Callie? Callie? That's his name! Callie Bear! Isn't he wonderful? Oh. Is something wrong? Yeah, what's up, Callum? I've just remembered something. We must speak. Without other ears. He looks at me, then jerks his head at Dolores. <laughs> Got it. So, it's my job to mind her and prevent eavesdropping while the royals withdraw to discuss amongst themselves. Hi, Dolores. Dolores accepts the state of affairs with her customary good grace. None at all. <laughs> you know, you're making this harder for yourself. You don't want to trail around waiting on Callum, and he doesn't want you there either, you know. If you tried a little harder to be agreeable, you could come to some arrangement and stay out of each other's way. If he could trust you, he'd likely give you the freedom of the palace so long as you didn't bother him. As it is, you're dragging each other down. I don't want the freedom to move around this tomb. I want to be free. If your prince is prone to vomit at the sight of me, he'll want to get me gone, no? My prince? Isn't he? Maybe I could make my life easier by playing their game, but for me, I cut that line already. I know what I want, and I'll do what it takes to get it, because nobody else will. Nobody else. You really have no one you can rely on, do you? No family, no true master, no friends, no lover, no one. So what? It's sad, it's a weakness, it makes me laugh. No, not it makes me laugh. Uh, I don't know if Dolores would want our pity. Let's talk, let's talk tough. Tough girls, you and me. It weakens you. If, you've had an if you'd had an accomplice back when you had Cassidy in the woods, you might have outflanked us. That's how I got involved in this mess. Prince Callum knew better than to take on unknown enemies alone. An accomplice would have stabbed me in the back and taken my share as soon as I looked away. And Oscar and I could have attacked Callum in his sleep. There's always that chance. It's wise not to give too much trust all at once, but you have to trust at least a little, or there's nothing to build on. Better not to tell her how exactly Callum enforced my trustworthiness at that time. <clears throat> yes. Just leave out that tiny itsy bitsy detail. Would you trust me? I don't know. I did once. I thought you were helping me. Get into those rooms? I did help you. I gave you what you wanted. But you weren't exactly honest with me, were you? 
Before I can say anything else, I hear a muffled shot from the nearby room. <coughs> What's going on? Moments later, Cassidy charges back into the room. She looks pretty angry. Don't need to... What difference does it make now? They already suspect. She flings a crumpled piece of paper to the ground, then raises her trembling chin to meet my eyes. Aw. You may as well know. How did she find out? I am Prince Caspian! Aww. Chapter 7a, The Changeling. Aw, Cassidy. But that's not possible. Of all of us in the room, I must have been the most surprised. And I don't know why, because we did know this already. <laughs> you can't be Caspian. You're a woman. No, not completely. Yeah, someone did bang on the door. Your Highness, is everything alright? They must have heard the raised voices. Luckily, they haven't opened the door yet. I- I'm fine! She muffles her sobs against her brother's shoulder. <laughs> we don't need any help in here, thank you! <laughs> Reassurance is delivered, he lowers his voice. They did something to him. They changed him. Into her. How can you be sure? This... this must be a mistake. When he was little, when we were together, Cass called me Kelly. Aww. Is that a Callum? Oh, that's so sweet. And he made me promise to protect him from the monsters. A promise I couldn't keep. Just because she gave her toy bear a nickname doesn't mean that... No, it's true. I've seen it. Huh. I know you said it before, but even for a noble, that's hard to swallow. So now you're a man? I'm not a man, and I'm not a woman. I'm nothing. I can't be either Cassidy or Caspian. I don't know what to do. Must I become a prince? To fight and drink and boast? To win a bride? I... I can't! No, you should not have to. If I had defended you, kept them from taking you away. But you tried, and I didn't even remember. Ah, dust. Look, don't take this as sympathy, but it sounds like your king did this, not you. Not much a kid can do to keep from getting cut or kicked when something bigger's got it in for him. I think that's the nicest thing Dolores has said ever. <laughs> I don't care for the sound of that. What sort of life did Dolores have before she was called to the palace? Still. Dolores is right. Whatever happened, both of you were children at the time. This isn't your fault. What you do now that you know, that's what you can change. Callum tried to tell me earlier, and I thought it was nonsense. He was right all along. If I'd only listened. No, you shouldn't have listened to me. Not then. Why not? Because I was wrong. It was Madeline who showed me. I was trying to force you into the life I thought you should have had. If I'd done that, I wouldn't be any different from our... from the people who did this to you in the first place. You were Caspian once, but you've been Cassidy for a long time. I don't have the right to take that away. Cass. Sister or brother, it doesn't matter to me. I will always defend you. Callie! We. Oui. Wonderful. Your pea's in a pod and the king's a pot of piss. Now what? You shouldn't say that about my... Well... They're still my parents. Our parents. Even if I can't understand how or why they would do what they did. They needed an heir. If Callum was right and something happened to the first Cassidy when she was a baby... So what mattered most to our royal parents was not their children, but their grip on power. That babe was mother's last child. If it died, then cousin Sophia would be the heir, and they couldn't let that pass. Sophia should have been the heir all along, not me. That means... Riel is the true princess now. So that duke you thought was a snake had the right of it by your rules? 
By right of blood? That is not enough. Just because your parents are in the wrong doesn't mean Duke Farad is in the right. Mm. I met him, you know, briefly. Strange guy with an even stranger voice. <laughs> he didn't act like a man who was trying to murder Cassidy for her inheritance. He gave the impression of being more concerned that everyone else was plotting against him. Which may have been only what he wanted you to see. Of course. Still, if he had sent assassins with guns, he could have had her killed outside the palace walls. If he's matched up against people who would do this to their own children, he may have reason to be so guarded. Hmm. <clears throat> Cassidy shakes her head. Nothing makes sense. Hidden moves, secret plots. I can't put it together. It's almost like a royal trap. <laughs> I'm no sort of wisdom at all. But that's right, isn't it? I'm not a princess. I'm an imposter. I should tell everyone the truth. Wait, don't be hasty. A secret like this. If it gets out, the whole kingdom will be in chaos. Wouldn't that be a sight to see? If you remove yourself from the succession, you can never undo it. Your life as you know it will be gone. No more Princess Cassidy. No hope of a royal wedding for Oscar. No chance of a title and a marriage of my own. I can't have that. But that's only the tip. What would happen to Cassidy if she were revealed as a fake? The mobs would tear her apart. My life as I know it is an illusion! None of it is real! Be careful. Don't alert the guards. We still don't know what exactly was done to you, or what happened to the first Cassidy. Mm-hmm. The only people who can answer those questions are the king and his wisdom. How can I trust anything they say? Ah, Poor Cass. Waving the rest of us aside, Cassidy retreats to the cushioned safety of her canopy bed and hides her head in her hands. This doesn't feel real. If I close my eyes, will I wake up and none of this have happened? Or if I'm the dream, if I close my eyes, will I simply disappear? Her eyelids slide down, leaving her face blank, but for the tracks of tears. No sound escapes her lips. Even her breathing stills to quiet. Callum reaches out a hand to her, then lets it fall again. I should have found another way to tell you. <sighs> a deep inhalation. Her shoulders rise and fall. I did not want to cause you pain. <sighs> Slow breath in, then out again with a sigh, and her eyes open. You did the right thing. I've lived a lie long enough. I may not be a true princess, but I was trained to be one. And a princess must have the strength to face unpleasant truths. With those few moments of quiet despair, the worst seems to have passed, and she is calmer now. Man, that was quick. My parents, our parents have done terrible things in the name of power. To me, to you, to everyone. They kept me isolated and ignorant. They beat you and neglected you. And when you finally reached me and there was a chance that their secret might escape, they made up more lies to confuse and separate us. Locking Oscar in his quarters and Madeline in the dungeons, telling me nothing. And then you and Dolores. It was never about Dolores, was it? It was about me. That was just another illusion to distract us. Nothing is ever about me. Oh, Dolores, this is not the time. They, they did all this to have an heir. So the most appropriate punishment is for them to lose that heir. Isn't it? Maybe so. But giving up your position now means punishing yourself for what they did. What would happen to you if you weren't the princess anymore? What would happen to your kingdom? If it becomes known that Predrick and Paloma lied for so long, there would be full-scale revolt. Do they deserve any better? Our people do. For their sake, I must keep this secret. But that does not mean I should inherit. I could go to Farad privately and explain. Then abdicate. And do what? I don't know. I've never known anything else. 
<sighs> I remember a radiant young woman exclaiming over her anniversary gifts, reading out Oscar's poetry and blushing, showing off her beloved toy. I can't think of that girl as Caspian. Seeing her like this, bowed with despair, I can almost catch a glimpse of the young man she might have become. Might have, but never did. Only in anguish does her identity waver. This is what Predrick and Paloma have done to her. This is the cost of the game of politics. Whatever you choose, I will support you. Nothing has to change if you don't want it to. I don't know what to do. Ah, <sighs> I don't think you should talk to Duke Farad. He doesn't want to inherit the kingdom anyway. And you've been raised to it. <sighs> Make the best of a bad situation and talk to your parents and get this sorted out. I don't think you should make any rash plans right now. You're still reeling from the blow. Your parents have overreached themselves in a desperate attempt to keep you from learning the truth. But they failed. You know. That means you have power over them now. There are a lot of questions that still lack answers. You need to talk to your parents. Lady Valois is right. Knowledge is power. And you'd better use it while you can. What do you mean? I mean, we all have things we want, right? You've got their big secret now. You've got them by the short strings. It won't last. So figure out what you want before you go after them with it. I know what the boot knockers want. <laughs> Does she mean me and Callum? Boot knockers? <laughs> oh, brother. What I want is my freedom and enough coin to keep it, with no soldiers dragging me back. So, I'm trusting you to make that work. Ah, did our chat about trust do something? We changed the laws for, for the better. Hooray! Don't get me wrong, this doesn't make us friends or sisters or anything stupid like that. It makes more sense to work together, that's all. <clears throat> of course! You're right, we should all plan for what we want to achieve. Okay, let's make plans. After the plans are made, Callum sends a message to the king in his wisdom, requesting a discussion on the subject of Prince Caspian. It might have been preferable to arrange an audience somewhere else, but at the moment I'm still not allowed to travel openly through the palace hallways. <coughs> Since Cassidy wishes me to be present, the only available option is for the royal couple to come here to her chambers. <sighs> At least that was what we were expecting. Oh no. Please. No more... No more, uh, wrenches thrown in the... in the... whatever. I don't even know. I'm so confused. <sighs> I just want my answers, darn it. Instead, the wisdom came alone. Why is the king afraid? Cassidy, are, are you well? My poor little girl. Don't call me that! I am not a little girl. It seems that I am not a girl at all. You know. Her gaze sweeps the room, counting each face in turn. <laughs> she looks so angry. She does not pause when she notices my present. Apparently my secret excursions are not so secret as I thought. Oh. I... We were going to tell you eventually. We only wanted to ensure you were safe. If everything had gone as we planned, if this event had run smoothly, you would have been protected. How was this supposed to protect me? Once you had been seen and admired by those assembled princes, who would dare gainsay them? Even if some rumor escaped in the future, those who knew you would deny it. No prince would wish to admit that he, had he has been fooled. And once you were married... Married? Like this? Once you were wedded, your husband could not reject you. You would be safe. Be that as it may, your illumination, it seems a cruel thing to change a son into a daughter for your own purposes. You tell it like it is, Madeline. It was what he wanted. What who wanted? Caspian. Huh? What? <laughs> I did it for him, for her. 
Caspian's body was male, but his heart was always female. That's ridiculous. You were so young. You don't remember how he begged to be allowed dresses and dolls. He wanted to be a girl. Always. I... And when we finally made that choice, Cassidy was happier than Caspian had ever been. A convenient fiction to cover the choices you made to protect your own succession. You could not accept the infant Cassidy's death, so you murdered my brother to create from him a new heir. Cassidy's death? You mean... you don't know? Caspian was my last child. Oh, so there was no Cassidy. What? That is not possible. That baby was born before you took Caspian away. I remember the presentation. There was a baby, but she was not mine. When we decided to let Caspian become Cassidy, it was far too late to claim that we had been mistaken all along. Nor could a toddling child be passed off as a newborn infant. A maid in my service was great with child. She agreed to let that daughter be known for a time as my daughter. I mean, that infant be known as my daughter. And let me guess, that infant was Dolores. That's it? Another lie? There never was any Princess Cassidy? You are Cassidy. The only Cassidy that ever was. You always have been. I'm sorry that you found out like this. I should have told you long ago, but I was afraid. You have always been such a good girl. Kind and honest and caring. Everything I could want in my heir. I was afraid that if you knew the truth, you might insist on standing aside, or telling your suitors. Well, of course I have to tell them! There is no reason for them to know. Don't you understand? If any hint of this were to escape before you are safely married, you would be killed. I will not let that happen. You are my little girl. I have to protect you, whatever it takes. <sighs> Callum lets out a breath, half sigh and half laughter. How any thought can be so right and so wrong at the same time. I understand your concerns. But it would be wrong for me to marry under false pretenses. How could any man love me if I lied to him about something like that? My darling, you hold the wisdom to guide this kingdom. It is your duty, and it is mine to protect you. I mean, prepare you, and protect you. <clears throat> your husband should be chosen for his ability to be a great king. The rest is secondary. If you choose wisely, your husband will forgive you for your omission in time. There are many things I regret about the decision we... I made so long ago. I have brought pain to all of you, I know. For the first time, she addresses Dolores. You most of all. But I believed it was necessary in order to preserve my daughter's life. I will never be ashamed of that. Wait... What do you mean, me? And then it all comes together. Am I right? Dolores was that infant, wasn't she? Yes. What? If your mother had survived, things would have been different. I trusted her in all things. But she died and the baby lived. For that brief time, I raised you as my own. I lived in the palace? You are a beautiful baby, so quiet and sweet. It's hard to imagine. <laughs> yeah. But we couldn't keep you. It would have been discovered. So you brought in your new Cassidy and got rid of the extra baby. Friedrich had her taken away. He said she would be cared for. If your mother had lived, we would have given her a new home. I thought he arranged something similar. Instead, he dumped me on an orphan house in the dead of night and walked away. Not quite so harsh. There were instructions, funds. He did not intend for you to perish. And later, you found out what had happened to the child you had held and arranged for her to be brought to the palace. Yes, I owed that to her mother. Dolores was the name she gave you before she died. It was her sorrow that she would never see you grow up. We have done you many wrongs, I know. 
but I have tried to help you the best that I could. Help me? Huh. You've made me into nothing no one. I'll never fit in anywhere. And now I was a baby princess. What does that get me, a pat on the head? I know I can't make up for what you lost. Now that you all know the truth, we can arrange a better position. No! Mother, Dolores isn't happy here in the palace. Promoting her doesn't make it better. She wants to be self-sufficient. A small holder. Perhaps if you ask her about her skills. Yes, of course. <laughs> Callum just pushes Dolores out of the way. And now she turns to regard me. <clears throat> Miss Valois. We used you to divert suspicion, knowing that you did not deserve the consequences. I am sorry, especially now that it has been made clear how much you did to protect my daughter. Friedrich planned a proclamation to restore your honor, but I was waiting until it was time for you to leave. I hoped to have you safely out of Gwellinor before you could uncover the truth. And you, Callum. Don't apologize to me. You don't even know me. I've looked away from you for too long. In my mind, you're still a brave little boy. I can't condone the things you've done. You have twisted order to suit your desires. But I loved Caspian, and Cassidy is my sister. I won't let anyone harm her. That far, at least, we can be allies. <laughs> allies with your own parents. That's kind of strange, but okay. A moment of silence stretches into tension, broken only when Princess Cassidy clears her throat. Ahem! <laughs> there is something else that we should discuss. Oh. Epilogue, the agent. The agent? While Predrick and Paloma's plan had more than its share of flaws, in the end, Cassidy's anniversary celebration was a success. Entertainment and excitement if a bit more than planned, was had by all. The princess was introduced to a wider social sphere and found to be acceptable. There were no further interruptions by thieves, kidnappers, or assassins, and all the guards departed- all the guards- the guests departed safely. All except for me. Yes, do tell what happened. Emphasizing the fragility of her position, Princess Cassidy convinced her royal parents that she needed agents she could rely on absolutely. And who better to manage the new responsibilities of royal intelligence than her brother, Prince Callum? <laughs> nice. Of course, to provide a stable foundation for such a role, he would need to be married. But that could be arranged. Oh? I can't believe what an enormous production your father is making out of this. At least you don't have to foot the bill. <laughs> Aww! What a nice dress! So simple. Oh, you guys look beautiful. When I think of what I could do with that much gold, there are so many upgrades we still need to make. Your workshop especially. Do you really need quite so many pins and gears? <laughs> no, you, now you don't want me to build that extended mirror? Then at least you won't be using it to spy on me. Perhaps I should request more funds for a lavish honeymoon. We could draw up plans tonight. Tonight, I expect you to have no attention for anything else but me. <laughs> hmm. A fairy tale wedding to a man who truly understands me. There are few in the world who are so lucky. Aw, yeah, you guys are just so perfect together. The guests smile and cheer as our hands meet. Even Dolores is in attendance now that she's certain no one will try to arrest her or press her into service. Wow, how far we've come. Her invitation was not Callum's idea, but Cassidy's. Okay, we haven't gone too far yet. The princess has maintained an unlikely correspondence with her former kidnapper, trading information as they each adapt to their changes in circumstances. Dolores still insists that they are not friends, but her actions suggest otherwise. She's even sent Cassidy samples from her first planting. Nice. Considering their history, I wouldn't be surprised if her only wedding gift to Callum is a lump of mud. <laughs> Ah, it would be perfect. Prince Oscar cannot be here today, although he has sent wedding presents in his name. Aw, oh, Oscar. It is too soon since his last visit, and my new rank too unimportant to be worth the breach. Still, I expect I will be seeing him again soon enough, as he is courting my new sister, Princess Cassidy. Well, that's good. 
Perhaps in the future Oscar will truly be my brother. Whatever happens, Callum and I will work for the security of Gwelinor. Together. Ah, happy end. Yay! We did it, everybody. Ah, oh, got through Royal Trap again so fast. Thank you for watching me play through Callum's route. I think that was my favorite out of all the ones I've done. Um, so yeah, going back to Magical Diary again already. And we're going to pursue a certain demon boy. See if you can figure out who that could possibly be. So, if you feel like watching that, maybe I'll see you over there. And until then, I'll see you later, guys.